What's up guys, JC here, and here is how you flash firmware to your flight controller. I will go ahead and say that if you follow all of my directions throughout this video, and it's still not working for you, then watch the next video. I will leave a link to my Betaflight playlist where you can find that next video. You guys may have to change your drivers, but hopefully not. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, if you haven't yet, maybe this is day one for you, Either download the Betaflight Configurator or Clean Flight Configurator, uh, whichever one you want. I'm going to recommend Betaflight because I really think it's much better. The next thing you need to make sure you have is download the CP... Well, let me back up. If you have a flight controller with a CP2102 uh, chip, then you need to download the CP21X driver. If your flight controller has a virtual COM port, then download the STM USB VCP driver. If you're not sure which one your flight controller has, then just download them both and you're good to go either way. Also, uh, whenever you download these, make sure you unpack them and install them uh, because just downloading them isn't going to do anything. You have to unpack the, uh, the files and folders. Okay, next we can go to the firmware flasher screen and now let's talk about how we get into the bootloader. To flash firmware to your flight controller, you have to be in the bootloader mode. Now, there's many different ways of doing this, and depending on what type of flight controller you have. Most flight controllers have boot pads, which are something that looks like this. It even says boot right next to these pads. Just another example, uh, here's another flight controller with the boot pads located here, and another with them located here. Some flight controllers don't have the pads, they have the buttons. So the button would look something like this, or like this, or even something that looks like this. For you guys with the pads, you have to jump these two pads together and short them out against one another. The two ways of doing this is you can just take a piece of scrap wire and cut the end off to where it's long enough to where it can reach both the pads and you will place this against both these pads and then just hold your thumb over it and then plug in your USB cable and that will get you into the bootloader. The other way of doing it is you can take a jumper like this. It comes with a lot of receivers and uh, cameras, stuff like that. And then I just take two pin headers and plug it in just like that. And then you can just take this and put both prongs on both boot pads and that will short them out against one another. The next thing we need to talk about is how to know if you have successfully entered the bootloader. So if you plug in a USB cable, you see this red light right here? This is my status light. If you are in the bootloader, you will not get that status light. So if I take my piece of wire and just put it across both pads, then hold my thumb over it, plug in the USB cable. See how I'm not getting that red status light? If you did get that status light, then it didn't work. You will have to retry it again. My next tip is once you have entered the bootloader, you do not have to keep holding this wire or jumper on those pads. You can release it because once it's in the bootloader, it's going to stay there until uh, you disconnect the USB cable and plug it back in. Now for you guys with the boot buttons, it's going to be the same thing. I plug in my USB, I get the status light. If you hold down the button and then plug in the USB, I don't get the status light. So now I'm in the bootloader. So regardless of uh, whether you have the pads or the button, let's all go into the bootloader mode and go back into beta flight. Now you need to Choose the firmware for your flight controller. Uh, in this example, I'm using the ReadyMade RC Dodo, so I will pick, uh, pick RMDO, which is the abbreviation for ReadyMade RC Dodo. Uh, now, if you have a different flight controller, don't copy me. Remember, use the firmware for your flight controller. Next, uh, we need to choose the firmware version. So if you click this next drop down box, you'll see all the different versions here. What I recommend doing is always using the newest version of firmware. Also, uh, you want to come back and check every now and then. I'd say every couple weeks because as you can see from the dates here, they are offering new firmware very often. Okay, so for the majority of you, 
uh, that just, you know, you came to this page, it's going to look like this with all of these turned off. So what you want to do is click Flash Firmware. Now for some of you, it may start flashing firmware. For others, it may not. For me, it did not. You will know if it's flashing firmware because you will get this orange meter slowly going up right here until it finishes and then it says completed or something like that. For those of you who uh, got this uh, programming failed message, this is what you want to do now. Disconnect your fly controller from your USB. Click on the welcome screen. Now go back to firmware flasher. Choose your uh, version of firmware once again, and this time we will do no reboot sequence and full chip erase just as an extra precaution. Now we will uh, jump those pads together again and plug in our USB. Once again, make sure you do not have the status light. Click uh, load firmware and now flash firmware. Once again, for some of you, it may start flashing firmware now. Some of you, it still failed. So what we want to do is disconnect the USB cable again. This time we will do manual baud rate and leave this set to 256,000. Once again, click on the welcome screen, then go back, choose your version of firmware, and now we are ready. So with all three of these checked, load firmware online, jump the pads again, plug in the USB cable, make sure the status light is off, and flash firmware. And now it's flashing. My next tip is sometimes it will stop right in the middle and then the rest of the bar will be turn red and it will say uh, verifying not complete. Oh look it did it. I was just about to say this happens almost every time. Uh, in this case you are not doing anything wrong it's just something with Betaflight and CleanFlight, you have to try it two, three, sometimes four times. So it's really no big deal. So just click Flash Firmware again. And we got past halfway, so now it's going to finish. Uh, but yeah, don't be surprised if it doesn't work the first try. Sometimes you have to try it twice, three times, four times, and eventually you will get programming successful. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. Like I said, if it still is not working for you, then uh, watch my next video because you guys may have to change your drivers. So thanks for watching. I will see you there.